This is the Earth Science Classroom. So this video is all about oceanography, looking at the oceans, and in particular, we're going to define what a sea is versus an ocean, how this came to be from the historical perspective of the seven seas, and how this is now adapted for modern times, the notion of the seas versus oceans. So looking at the different sizes of these oceans versus seas, and the, their locations around the world. An ocean is defined as a large body of water over an ocean basin, which is a depression area of the Earth's crust where water has filled in and covered up to a certain point, which is then how we define land versus ocean. So the main oceans are the Pacific, Atlantic, Southern Indian, and the Arctic. Now, the oceans are generally salt water, which is about 3.5 to 3.7 concentration or percentage of salt. So if the oceans are the largest body of water on the planet, what's a sea? Now historically the seven seas were all around the Mediterranean, the ancient Greeks and the seafaring societies and associations of the Mediterranean, ancient Greece, Rome and parts of Northern Africa, the Middle East, they all named the seas around the Black Sea, the Mediterranean, and that area. Now, the modern notation of the seven seas are will be the oceans, the North Pacific, South Pacific, North and South Atlantic, Indian, and that kind of stuff. So that's the modern notation. So a sea is defined as part of the ocean, which is by land or partly enclosed by land, by the coastline, and you're naming these seas based on the geographic location of the body of water within the ocean as a larger body and these seas are named by what country or region it's next to or adjacent to or what kind of area it is based on the currents or the lagoons or the islands that kind of separate this section of ocean by the coastline versus the interior or the center of the ocean which is not by a coastline or a landmass. Two classic examples on our planet would be the Mediterranean, which is enclosed as part of the Atlantic Ocean, but has Europe and Middle East and Africa as the border coastlines, and it also enters into the Black Sea and the Aegean Sea and Tyrrhenian Sea. So they're all part of the Mediterranean as that larger body, which is then connected to the Atlantic Ocean. So on the other side of the Atlantic, on the uh, North American side, you have the Gulf of Mexico, which is enclosed by Florida and Texas, and Panhandle, and also Mexico and parts of Cuba. That is the Gulf of Mexico. Again, part of the, the North Atlantic or the Atlantic Ocean. So both sides have these seas which have been named based on where they are geographically. Now, when discussing the size of these seas, there are some obvious larger seas and some smaller seas just on just basic observation of a map. But to get the exact number down to a fine and consistent value, it's tough because some literature gives different values for each seas, but some of these larger seas include the Philippine Sea, the Coral Sea, all over one and a half to two million square miles of, of water, the Bering Sea, the Sargassa Sea, which is in that North, North Atlantic gyra, and the movement of currents uh, between the Gulf Stream and the equatorial current moving towards the Caribbean and the Caribbean and West Indies. You've got the Caribbean Sea, the South China Sea, the East China Sea. You've got you have the Gulf of Mexico, the Arabian Sea. You've got the Hudson Bay area in northern Canada. You've got the Sea of Japan, the Adaman Sea in the Indian Ocean. You've got the Tasman Sea, which is off the coast in between New Zealand and Australia. You've got the Weedle Sea. Uh, which is off Antarctica, the Red Sea, which is a classically uh, well-known uh, stretch of water between uh, the Arabian Peninsula and Northern Africa. You've got the Black Sea again, very uh, well-known body of water in uh, Europe and, and the Asian, Eurasian continent. We also have the Caspian Sea, which is a very large body of water, but it's not actually a sea, it's a lake. It was part of Mediterranean and flowed from the Black Sea in the past historically but now it's enclosed and just is classified as a lake but they kept the name the Caspian Sea is absolutely huge the largest lake on the planet but it's not a sea it's actually a lake 
In conclusion, the ocean is the largest body of water. It is salt water, and the areas around where the ocean meets the land, the coastline, and different shapes and areas around the coastline that is created between the ocean and the land, we call seas, or some areas are called seas based on certain geographic locations. Now, these seas can vary in size, and what is enclosed, or how much land encloses these bodies of water, but they are parts of the ocean and they are touching the coastlines.